Hey there, thank you for joining me. This is Elizabeth here on the Dandy Soap DIY channel. Today we are doing spring and summer helpers. This will help us outdoors as well as indoors for our garden and our home. If you like saving money, want budget friendly, do it yourself ideas, then stay tuned because I got a handful for you. Spring brings beauty, and this beauty is highly nutritious. My world famous wild sweet violet vinegar. So, first, we're going to need a few supplies. A jar and some white distilled vinegar. Here to my wild sweet violets that are growing in the yard and this is a huge patch and you could really get a serious amount picked in a short period of time. So the wild sweet violets are the little purple blooms that grow in your grass and they are related to the sweet pea family. So if you pick them and look underneath that looks just like a sweet pea. And you can take these, pick you a good cupful, and saturate them with just enough vinegar to cover the blooms. And let it soak for three to seven days, and then strain out the spent blooms and uh, toss them. And you can use the vinegar on anything that you use vinegar for, whether it be your tall salads or doing your viney sausages. And it's high, extremely high in vitamin C. It tastes really delicious. It makes a beautiful raspberry amber color vinegar. You would use white distilled vinegar. And the vitamin C is great for cellulite as well as circulation, weight control, and anything that you would use your vinegars for. So it tastes really good and delicious. And you can actually pick these blooms just like they are and use them on a tall salad as well. And they're just everywhere. Just everywhere. All in the grass. And just the white ones are okay to pick as well. So you can pick the white. Now first, I've topped off my jar pretty full with the blooms. And you're just going to pour enough vinegar to saturate them and cover them. So my mason jar might hold roughly half of that bottle, which is about eight ounces. And shake it up real good. Make sure it is a liquid tight jar lid and just cover them. Make sure you label it. And I always date it at least seven to 10 days out. And after about an hour, you're gonna have this beautiful amber, red, raspberry colored vinegar. Now, after a while, I've got this bottle already labeled. It will turn an amber golden color. That is just fine. It just means that the vinegars, the acidic D in the vinegar, has done away with the pigment in the flower blooms. And the vinegar is just as good and lasts forever. Now you're going to be looking for the heart-shaped leaf that has the serrated edges, has a smooth stem, and it is the shape of a heart. The blooms that you're looking for are these beautiful violets, and they can even be white with the purple. Now remember, these are in the these are in the sweet pea family, so the back of them looks just like the blooms of the sweet pea. They taste absolutely delicious. They have a green crunch to them. They're great on tall salads, and just look for that famous viola. Johnny Jump Ups, or Wild Sweet Violets. They're all the same in the same family, and they're all edible. Yes, your Violas and your Johnny Jump Ups, you can buy those in seed or already for bedding plants. Now, this is what the vinegar looks like. See this beautiful raspberry red colored vinegar. And once this has saturated for about seven to 10 days, you're just gonna strain it out. I strained mine about three times and toss the spent blooms because well they're just not so good then and about three times to make sure there's no sediments in the bottom and make sure that you label your bottle and voila you're going to have this beautiful vinegar repurposing a clay pot can make a g twine keeper a true waterproof beauty for your outdoors so you'll need your medium-sized clay pot a quarter inch drill bit a clay saucer mod podge paint of your choice, and a good brush. Now, it's real important that whenever you select your clay pot, make sure to get it wet under cool water and saturate it completely and let it soak up the water. 
This will give it a smooth finish and it will take the paint and your sealer better. So you'll first put a coat of Mod Podge and then you'll paint your clay pot to your desired color. This one had these cresses in it when I purchased it. Now make sure you put the drill bit to hold through there while the clay pot is damp. And then you can paint it up and make sure you also include another layer of Mod Podge over top of your paint. Run your G twine through your clay pot hole bottom, and voila, you now have a waterproof, weatherproof outdoor G twine keeper that is just absolutely gorgeous. I love this thing. Okay, gang, another thing that I do in the spring for preparation is I get a lot of carpenter bees on my front porch and back deck area. So anywhere it's covered. <clears throat> so this is your handy thing to do. It's a real good trick. Take you a brown paper bag and stuff it, you know, with anything, you know, plastic bags or whatever. Tie it up with a string, as you can see right there. And then you are going to tie this into the corners of your porch area. For example, I'm going to show you this one right here that I've already hung. See it hanging right there? And just take you a just take you a thumbtack and press the string that you tied onto it in to the corners of your porch or the area you know if yours is long like mine then this one's about midways and just get it up the you know pin it up to the top what it does is it makes the carpenter bees think that this is a hornet's nest and they will not duel with a hornet and it will keep them at bay. So if you don't want them boring into your porch, the carpenter bees boring into your porch, then hang these little handy dandy things you can make real quick into the corners with a fish pin. All right, so that's another little tip for your spring uh, decor and prepping for your planting and getting everything set to uh, enjoy your porch in the spring and summer. This is a garden tip about your vining or what they call your climbing rose bushes. Now you see these pieces right here that are broken and they're discarding themselves. Well, if you have dry pieces that are like this right here, you're okay to go ahead and prune that. So just, you can clip that. This one is actually breakable. But as you can see, that whole column right there, no new growth is gonna come onto that. It is gone. So you can actually go all the way down to the bottom and snip those brown ones because they're not going to populate and then that way it gives more strength and durability to your climbing rose bush and you'll get more blooms on it so these will be blooming around may all the way through june and july and uh, if you will put you some kind of guard up to where they can lay on it and tie them up they'll just grow really really big and this one right here this is our bushing rose bush this is your tea roses the little tea roses the small ones this one actually does the pink now you see these blooms where they've shedded themselves and so forth and now the spring has come and she's popped back out so she is getting ready to start sending up some blooms and so forth see all these fresh new greeneries that are on her so if she has any dead spots like this right here see how lengthy that is and all that you want to clip that all the way to just before this nodule. See where it's giving this new spring on this branch? You want to clip it right about a quarter of an inch above, maybe a half an inch above that nodule. And that will clean her up and get all this uh, that's died back off of her and that will help her as well. So you can see they kind of self prune and they start drying where it's green and then it's brown clip to the brown don't go past it and that will clean up your little tea rose bushes and this is the last plant i'm going to tell you about this is your purple coneflower also known as echinacea yes this is where echinacea comes from and as you can see all of the long stiff branches that were growing in her see how i've already made sure that those were pulled out and broken down and you can see them laying here you want to get those away from her, and then that way she can grow up tall and bright 
and she'll get oh probably about usually four feet tall sometimes five feet tall and then she'll have her purple coneflowers up top so just make sure you get all that dead away from her and uh, clean that up and then that way her greenery can show off and she'll have her new strength in her new stems and then for her blooms so usually around may uh, you'll see them pretty big and then by june they'll be in full bloom and the butterflies and so forth they'll bring your butterflies and uh, give your bees all the nutrition that they need to keep them healthy i'll give you a shot we have some birds growing i mean we have some birds in this little birdhouse here on the left so i don't want to disturb them and yes guys that is a eucalyptus tree it is extremely tall let me stand over here and give you a good shot she's really really tall alrighty so if you stuck around this long then that means you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the budget friendly tips that I'm bringing to you and I do that very very often so this is our spring and summer garden helpers now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you share it, pass it on, and share it with someone who likes videos of this sort. Give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, well, hello. I'm Elizabeth, and this is the Danny Soap DIY channel. And my current subscribers, I love you all very dearly. And you guys know the drill. Till the next DIY, I'll be crafting, y'all. Bye.